Good afternoon, everyone. The article everybody is talking about in terms of global cooling, the sun is going to sleep. The new article presented by Professor Valentina Zarkova suggests that solar activity will fall by 60% during the 2030s. What does that 60% exactly mean to us? Let's take a look back through all of the ice core data going back half a million years. We're going to jump through the Younger Dryas. We're going to take a look through the last 11,000 years up to our present day and see exactly what 60% means in a numerical value for us is temperature drop. If it is indeed occurring, we should start to see massive swings in temperature. Frosts in the middle of July as we are in Germany. 100 inches of snow in Chile. Add on top of this, now they're recalibrating and recalculating how sunspots are numbered. The purpose of the video is to try to give you a good gauge of the actual degree temperature drop we would experience at 60% decrease in solar activity. I've left many, many links below for you to follow. We're going to start with the article itself. It goes by many names through many different media outlets. The sun is going to sleep, solar hibernation in 2030, global cooling in 2030. A plethora of different media outlets are following this currently. It's the first time the mainstream media has truly come out and started to speak about this event occurring. Looking at the next two solar cycles, solar cycle 25 and solar cycle 26, the cooling we're experiencing and these anomalous events we've had all last winter are just the precursor for the actual event that's coming up. The real cooling that's going to affect our agriculture should arrive around 2018. That's another three winters from this year. When we do get into it, a mini ice age, it's a 400 year cooling event. Also, many scientists who've done work that say it comes on rather instantly within a year or so. So the real question that needs to be asked, will this drop in temperature be a linear drop in temperature or exponential? If it's linear, we'll lose about a quarter of a degree every year until the event truly gets into the depths and the actual coolest part of the event. If it's exponential, maybe it's a quarter of a degree this year. It might be half a degree two years from now a full degree five years from now, two degrees ten years from now. Just don't know how it's going to roll out. So here's the kicker for the article. The model suggests solar activity will fall by 60% by the 2030s. But what does 60% mean? They never gave a true number on that. So let me try to walk you through this here. I took a look at 50 or 60 different ice core temperature reconstruction data. I tried to pull the ones that were the easiest for everybody just to look at and understand when you see it. What I've done with my premise is I've taken today's temperature, taken a look back through history at what the maximum reduction of temperature was during even full glaciation. Because the article states a 60% reduction. 100% reduction will be full glaciation. So 60% of that total is what I'm going to get into right now. Vostok ice core shows an 8 degrees Celsius temperature difference between today's temperatures and the minimum lows during full glaciation. We come on here, we get a 9 degree difference. This is the ultra famous chart everybody's seen over and over and over again with the different ice cores. Uh, 9 degree temperature difference. Antarctica and Greenland overlapped, as you can see. It's actually 9.75 degree difference, but I just put it at 10. Also, when we look specifically at the Younger Dryas, we get the oxygen 18 isotopes on Greenland. We're looking at a 7.5 degree difference there. So all I did was simply take up those five slides, today's temperatures, and the maximum glaciation difference. So 8 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9.5 plus 7.5 is 43 degrees Celsius. Then we just simply divide that by 5. And we get our average of 8.6 Celsius. Now we'll take that 8.6 and we'll multiply that by 60%. And then we get a 5.16 degrees Celsius drop in temperature. Now that might not sound like a lot. What's it actually mean to us? Rolling back through the records, the Egyptian cooling at 
8,200 years ago was about a one and a half degrees Celsius drop. The Dark Ages and the Little Ice Age were a one to two degrees Celsius drop. I've created my own chart here, overlapping the collapse of Chinese dynasties with the amount of degrees of temperature drop that were verified by our own solar minimums in Western science, Maunder minimum, Dalton minimum, Sporer minimum, Wolf minimum. And also, during the collapse of the Chinese dynasties, this ushered in different invasions from the Mongols in search of food, basically. Now, this is a two degree temperature drop, mainly 1.5 to two degrees that wiped out the Chinese dynasties. The apex of the Chinese kingdoms at 800 AD, the Tang dynasty was also taken down. That was a two degree temperature drop. Now, you might ask yourself with this new article, is it the first time it's come out? Is this, wow, this is brand new information? Absolutely, it is not. This information has been out for four years already. And I don't know why we have been wasting time talking about global warming, global warming, all due to CO2, when this is clearly in your face. You cannot deny it any longer that the sun affects our climate and drives our climate, not CO2. So Dr. Abutsumov from the Pukovo Astronomical Observatory in Russia has been talking about this for several years. He has some great total solar irradiance, TSI graphs out here showing what will happen as we do get into this minimum. Here's one of the slides. I pulled this off of a video, which I've linked below as well. He called the exact same thing a few years back in 2003. Plus or minus 11 years at 2042. This new article matches up at 2030. Good job. Also, Spanish astrophysicists putting the same exact dates around 2031 to 2035 for the absolute minimum. There's been books written on this. Robert Felix does a really good job with not fire but by ice. If you want to see the full game plan of what's going to happen, read this book. John Casey also put out Cold Sun. It goes into the hibernation effect and what we can expect. We know where the cooling's been in the past. These are temperature reconstructions for the Little Ice Age. Also, if you want to get a good idea of where it's going to get cooler, this is going to affect food production globally. That's the reason I'm trying to put this video out to you so you get an understanding. When the temperature drops like this, it has taken down dynasties, kingdoms, fiefdoms and it is all encompassing both northern and southern hemispheres a majority of our wheat growing production corn and soybeans is going to be in these affected areas through northern china russia northern europe north america including canada and the united states funny while all this is happening the sunspot number count suddenly gets revamped there's a new way to suddenly catalog sunspots isn't that interesting they talk about solar minimums coming up and suddenly there's a new way to count sunspots let's take a look at it it's a standard method versus the combined method now notice left is the standard curve method we've always been using since the 1600s when you can see it you can calculate it if it's there it counts as one i want you to notice the difference in the way that the method of counting will skew the numbers northward and much higher than they are so when the average citizen the average person starts to look into this on their own after it starts to get cooler and it starts making more news stories after today if it's down at 50 sunspots in the traditional standard way to count them for the last 400 years the new composite combined method is going to raise that up to 75. so now in the news when they start to say, oh no, there's still 75 sunspots per month. Well, in actuality, it really would have been around 40 if they'd traditionally counted it in the old way. So keep your eye on the number of sunspots. There's still the data available for the standard and the new method. Make sure you take a look at both. And the signs are already here. You know, this thing is already in play. It has been in play for a whole year. Last year was the first year of the beginning of the precursor of these events that are showing you there's a solar minimum in play right now. Here we are, this is the middle of July, but Germany's getting frost on the ground in several locations. Also, there's been massive temperature swings. On July 6th, it was 36 degrees, and then July 10th, it plummets to freezing almost. I think it was two degrees. That's almost a 40 degree flip in temperature. This is absolutely not normal at all. 
and people are coming out going, oh, yes, it's normal. It should be that cold in Germany in the middle of uh, July. Are those the same people that were feeding all this uh, information that there was supposed to be no snow ever again and no ice in the Arctic ever again, but they're the same ones now saying, oh, yeah, snow and, and ice in the middle of July in Germany, that's normal. Also, frost in Scotland. Unusually cold weather pounding northern Vietnam. I didn't even cover the snows up in Yosemite that happened in the first week of July. Not talking about the blizzards racing through in all-time cold temperatures down in Australia right now with records, all-time record snows in New Zealand. I just don't have time to get into that. That's a separate video. Let's take a look at Peru. This is another one. We're going to take a look in Puno. Now here I pulled up weather data as usual. Average weather for Puno. Either snow is exceptionally unlikely to fall at any time of the year at this location or the station does not reliably report these types of precipitation events. Okay, this is what fell at that station. Rare snows? I believe so. Let's take a look at some temperature data. Let's see how rare the freezing cold temperatures are up there. Average negative 5 around July. Oh, we're blasting down to 21 below right now. Sot.net does a good wrap up following all the cold weather events. They're talking about surface frost even down in Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, Switzerland, Scotland saw frost, Blackpool, England frosting, the Tioga Pass and Yosemite closed due to snow, Southern Hemisphere, Australia, New Zealand, all time record cold and snow down there. You know, it, the signs are just so much in your face and with this new article coming out for the mainstream media to actually tell people what's going on, it's so obvious now they can't hide it anymore. There's just no more. It was because of global warming. So what's going to come? What actually going to happen? Well, if you follow Svensmark, cloud mystery is where you want to go. Check out this video, the cloud mystery. It talks about cosmic rays and when the sun decreases in strength and solar output, so does the solar wind, which decreases our magnetosphere, which allows more cosmic rays in. When this happens, there's going to be an exponential increase in cloud cover. And that's one of the things that went with the ice core data was it was five times higher during these events related to cosmic rays and solar cycles. So when you see extreme flooding, that's one of those directly related. When you see record snows, five, you're looking at five times more snow coming down the pike right now amazingly heavy rains are not even started yet. Well, you've seen these 200, 300 year rains. This is just the beginning. It's going to become so commonplace that the records we have now are going to be broken by five times in volume. So if you got an inch of rain as your record for the last 150 years, you're going to be looking at a five inch total coming up starting right now. If you got a foot of snow, you're going to be looking at five feet. Boston Oh my gosh, they had eight feet. I can't believe if they're going to be pushing 40 feet by the end of this event here. Even NASA admits cosmic rays at an all-time high during the space age during satellite measurements. I'll bring you back to the Younger Dryas comparison here and how they show the accumulation of, uh, of moisture content, actually snow. Speaking of that, if there were going to be these types of events, you would start to see them around. These massive hail fallings all over the planet here. Chile gets 100 inches at one snowfall. These are the types of events I'm talking about. These are going to become more commonplace. Also, volcanic eruptions are going to increase in not only explosivity, no more numerous eruptions everywhere across this planet starting now. Keep your eye on that. These are the five newest for this week alone. And when you start to look at patterns of cooling and how far back this is going to go, Mount Hakone erupts after 800 years. So what's that telling us? Volcanoes from 800 years ago that haven't erupted even once are now starting to wake up. There's been a couple at the 200 year mark as well. Now these volcanoes as a single eruption like the one on Bali that's having a little problem with the air traffic. Okay, that's one. Now in and of themselves, a single eruption, not going to do too much to the atmosphere. But currently there's 42 erupting volcanoes worldwide. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it. You're just going to need to prepare yourselves. You're going to have to work with your communities through this. You shouldn't go at it into fear. Chinese have a great saying, where there's danger, there's opportunity. You should consider yourself lucky to be alive during this time. You should try to thrive in this time. Work with everybody. This is a great time for humanity to reconnect because we will. At the end of this, we are going to come out of this event as a different species. 
reconnected spiritually again because we are going to need to rely on each other to get through this. Remember to subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030, and I'll keep the stories coming to you.